Hey there friends, it is me HL Mod Tech, and we've been working in Gliders 2.0 to make an awesome glider design that would fly longer than five seconds. And if you've got that done, then you were able to share and get your file printed for me. And my friends, now it's time to show you how to put it together. So let's get cracking. Step one is going to be to put your initials on all the pieces. If you have a partner, put their initials as well. Make sure you save this piece for later. Make sure you note which way is the front. I'm going to write my name on this one as well. I'm going to put my initials here. And this way, if you just ever lose this piece, we know who to get it to. If you want to be super smart, uh, you can also put the hour that you're in as well so we know how to track it down. These little tiny guys you need to have as well. And simply mark them just like that. I'm going to real quickly tell you, do not cut that out. Do not cut that out. Those are the places, those are the distances, the markings for where you put the tail and the wing once we've got that done. At that point, make sure you've also got your class folder for when you've stored it at the end of the hour in case you don't finish your build. The next step is to simply cut out your shapes. I'm going to speed up my video, but make sure you are cutting as accurate as you can. and then store each piece in your folder so you don't lose it. Yes, you do need these tiny little pieces. Keep track, this one is in the back. The one that's in the front has a little groove so you can attach your rubber band later. With all those pieces cut, it's time to cut out our wing. Make sure you save the bottom piece as it shows you how to make your perfect dihedral angle. And store that away. And like I said, make sure you also store away your dihedral angle. It is not a big deal if it posts outside the folder. When you've got those all cut out, make sure you come show me your folder with all your pieces in it and we'll get your supplies. You'll get one fuselage stick. You'll get the horizontal and vertical stabilizer sheet. And you also get a sheet of wing material. Make sure that you use this carefully as remember you only get one of these and part of passing is using your materials wisely. Lay your design on, make sure it's at the flat edge and then use a nice sharp pencil to make the marks for where you're gonna cut. Do not press too hard uh, you don't want to leave grooves. You just want to leave light lines. So that you can cut them with a knife in just a moment. When you've got your wing on, then you can move to your fuselage. Find that fuselage template. And do the same trick where you mark it on the balsa so that then you can cut it out. I made my fuselage shorter and thinner. So I'm going to have to cut it a couple times. Make sure you get that marked. And then also I'm going to put a little MDH on here so I know it's mine. While I've still got this right here, I'm going to make a little mark because that's where the wing goes. And then also this is where the tail goes back here. There's this little line that I'm following to get that set up. I also just noticed that my wood I had marked too long, so I'm going to trim that off. Right there is the spot that I really want. With that one lined up, let's move to the tail fin. As expected, mine are down here in the little pocket. And I'm going to trace those designs on just like we did the others. Okay. 
All right, so when it is time to cut, make sure you come ask me for one of the knives. Make sure you always carry it with the safety cap on and make sure you never cut anything but the balsa wood. If you have any questions, make sure you ask. You need to also make sure you always have a green cutting board. I'm going to cut this stick first, line it up so it's nice and straight. You can use a metal ruler if you want to make sure you keep your line accurate. And then simply trace across it a couple times as you cut, making sure you're always on a cutting board. This extra wood is super valuable, so make sure you're super careful to make sure you don't lose it. This one's a straight line, so it's easy to just cut through. Notice I'm slicing several times gently to get through the balsa. Not just trying to push through all at once, it's slice, slice. Then now that I've got this line started, I'm just going to finish it with the groove that I made earlier. Just slowly dragging it across and cutting it as straight as I can. Remembering that when I'm done, I get to sand it and make it smooth and more perfect. And just like that, we have separated our fuselage. Don't forget this is super valuable. Save it for the other parts for your plane and for other people's glider as well. Next up, let's cut the wing. Once again, just lightly pressing as you trace your lines. And just remember when you're done, you're gonna sand it to make that perfect shape that you want and make your wing more aerodynamic. Notice I'm always pulling away from my hand. I don't ever pull at myself because the last thing we want are any injuries. Once again, save all this material in case you have a mistake or someone else needs it. Same technique, simply cut them through and you're good to go. And once again, make sure you save your scraps for the other people. I did not mark these earlier, so I'm going to mark them right quick. And now we've got our two little fuselage add-ons, the finger grip and the place where your rubber band will connect. If you're in my room, of course, you can look in the supply area to find the little pieces that you need to help make that happen. With all your parts in place, it's time for you to sand them. Make sure you find my sandpaper and get them to the proper sanding. If you can think back to how you designed yours, did you choose light or heavy in the gliders 2.0? But this is how you get to that level, getting yours totally awesome before we actually start gluing things together. As you sand, make sure you sand with the grain, not against the grain. And then don't forget, we learned about having nice leading edges and trailing edges you can do that with the sandpaper you could not do that in the gliders 2.0 software you can also round your outside edges as well same thing with the adorable little tail fin you just don't want to break these guys it is really tough to sand after a glider has been built so make sure you do this before any assembly As you're problem solving, make sure you find the technique that works best for your glider. Alright friends, we are at the cool and tricky part. Make sure you get your template on top of your wing. And then we need to mark this center and we need to mark the top. So notice how I'm lining up these edges, and I'm making a little line right there in the center. Then I'm doing the same thing above it. And by lining up my wing this way, I'm guaranteed 
that I've got the center of the wing. And I'm going to label this B for bottom. So this is going to be the top. And I'm just gently making those marks. I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to connect those two lines so I can see the center of the bottom. Notice there's my B of my aircraft. You want that as close to centered as you can and you want to use a ruler to make sure you're straight and pull it across upside down. You're not pressing hard. You're just pulling across with the blade upside down. And when you do that three times, you can then rotate your wing to match the green cutting board and put it by the edge of the table. And this is really a scary thing to do, but what you do is you hold firmly with this hand and just put pressure on this and you'll hear it start to rip. And you're just pressing gently. And what that does is it gives you the bend, but it stays attached. And then you can go back to your template and adjust it until you've got the exact same dihedral angle that you designed it with. Now you're ready to attach your wing to your fuselage. Find one of my groovy little fuselage holders. These let you balance your fuselage for gluing, so it just holds it like that. And then also make sure you've got your marks visible for where that wing goes. I'm going to remark mine really quickly, just because I can't see them perfect. It's important to do this because that is what does your center of gravity the way you did all of that practice for. Then find some tacky glue. Make sure you've still got the front to the front. So this was the back of my wing, this is the front. Add glue in that groove and understand that less is more. Do not put a ton of glue because that won't let it hold. This is called tacky glue. So you just need a little bit of it. And once you got your glue in place, make sure your wing is lined up and hold it for a few seconds as it finds that happy place and you can let it dry. Make sure your fuselage is straight. You can see that mine is crooked. I'm going to fix that really quick. And then once you've got it all straightened out, make sure you're patient as you wait for it to dry firmly in place. All right, grab your template, line it up, and make sure that you've got it so that your center is where your center is. You can do that same thing to make sure you've got the line in the back so when you attach it, it's the way it's supposed to be. So now I've got two nifty marks, and then I can put a thin bit of glue on the back where that tail fin goes. Remember, once again, less is more the first time you attach these. Later, we'll add a little bit more glue to give it a little more support. And then I line up the lines, and my horizontal stabilizer is attached. Give it a little time to dry before you try and do your vertical stabilizer. Once it's dry, let's attach that vertical stabilizer. As with before, we're just putting a little bit of glue on this. Stressing again, less is more. And then line it up, hold it for a few moments, and let it dry. One other neat trick I've come up with, if you flip this over, you can get it so that your fuselage stays nice and straight. So it's easier to tell if your stabilizer is straight as well. Be patient letting it dry. Watch it for the first few minutes so that the glue actually sets and it doesn't flip. And you should be fine after a little while. Whenever you're done with your parts or your designs, make sure you store them back in your folder. So that way you never lose them. You never know you may make a championship level glider and want to make another copy of it. And if you get to the end of the hour, you want to be able to store your glider on top of your folder and put it in the cabinet so that it stays dry. You are welcome to keep one of my little sticks with it so that it helps it stay balanced the way that you want it to. All right, friends, it is time to attach the finger grip. There is no way for me to prove to you let this dry, but I promise you before I did the next step, I did let it dry because you don't want to be spinning this around when it's not fully attached. Finger grip goes back here. And that's what you're going to use when you pull your plane back for launching. 
you do want to make sure you've got it glued securely and you can see how that gives you much more fuselage to grab when it's time to launch the last piece we're going to add is the catch for the rubber band make sure when you glue this on you have got it oriented like this so the rubber band can stick in that spot make sure you hold it nice and snug because that is what you use to actually get the launch notice it has a sloped angle up here so that it doesn't catch on the launcher as well as with everything else give it time to dry before you do anything else when your glider has completely dried you can add a thin line of glue over along those wings just to give them a little bit of extra strength once again, making sure that you give it another day to dry in between. You can even smooth it with your finger to make sure that it doesn't wreck your aerodynamics. You can also do the same for your horizontal stabilizer and vertical stabilizer. Make sure when you're done, you wash your finger off because you don't want any more glue than you have to have. Alrighty friends, lastly, make sure your knives go back to the storage area where they're supposed to be. Make sure all the glue and supplies go where they're supposed to be as well. If you are done with your build, make sure you put any useful pieces of scrap in our scrap bin so they can help others. Alrighty friends, so I hope that helped you make your awesome competition glider. When you're working with these, you'll notice I'm wearing different clothes. That is just showing you I really did let stuff dry before I picked it up. You need to give it time so that it gets the correct angles you wanted. Friends, if you found this useful, please hit the like button. If you got a question, comment, or suggestion, add it down below. If you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Smash that subscribe button. And last but not least, hit the notification bell if you want to be the first to know when there's a brand new video from me, HL Mod Tech. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.